The Great Existential Question Nature versus Nurture There is a question that haunts runners in every corner of the globe. From the recreational jogger in the park to the serious amateur on the starting line of the Boston Marathon. It is a question that usually arises around the 35th kilometer, when the legs turn to stone and the lungs are burning. Are you born a runner or do you become one? Is it a matter of magic genes? Is it a matter of the environment you were raised in? Or is it simply a matter of brutal training and unwavering persistence? And let's go even deeper to the fear that holds so many of you back. Can we all get better or is there a hard biological limit? A glass ceiling that you cannot break through no matter how hard you try. In today's video, we are going to explore one of the most fascinating and hotly debated topics in modern sports science. The genetics of elite runners. We are going to unlock the secrets behind the dominance of East African athletes. But most importantly, we are going to look at what all of this means for your daily training. Stay with me until the very end, because there is a massive truth that the fitness industry rarely tells you. A truth that might change the way you lace up your shoes tomorrow morning. Genetics may explain where you start, and they may explain where the absolute finish line is, but they do not determine your destiny. The East African Enigma, Anomalies or Masterpieces For decades, elite runners from Kenya and Ethiopia have absolutely dominated the world's major endurance events. Look at the leaderboards of Berlin, London, Chicago, or the Olympics. From the legendary Eliud Kipchoge to Kenanisa Bekele, from the training camps of Eton to the unknown talents that emerge from the Rift Valley every single year, East Africa has conquered the map of human endurance. This dominance is so overwhelming that the entire scientific community has spent the last 30 years trying to answer the question, why? Is there a secret ingredient in their DNA? Is it the altitude? Is it the diet? Is it the culture? Or is it a perfect storm of all these factors creating the ultimate running machine? When you watch them run, it looks effortless. While you are fighting for every breath, they look like they are floating. This visual difference makes us feel inferior. It makes us feel like they are a different species. But are they? The science of DNA, the speed gene myth. Let's look at the cold, hard data. In recent years, geneticists have searched for the holy grail of running genes. One of the most discussed discoveries is a gene called ACTN3, often referred to in the media as the speed gene. This gene dictates how your muscle fibers operate. The R variant of this gene is linked to explosive power and speed. Think sprinters like Usain Bolt. The X variant is linked more to endurance and efficiency. Scientists thought, aha, the Kenyans must all have the X variant. But the truth turned out to be much more complex. While this gene appears in high frequency in some populations, studies showed that many elite marathoners actually carry the power variant, and many average people carry the endurance variant. Here is the scientific reality. There is no single gene that determines if you will be an elite runner. Endurance performance is what we call a polygenic trait. It depends on dozens, perhaps hundreds, of different genes acting together like a symphony. Some genes affect how efficiently you burn fat. Others affect the size of your heart's left ventricle. Others dictate how fast you clear lactate. Even if you had the perfect genetic lottery ticket without the right environment, and a life dedicated to the sport, nothing guarantees you would reach the top. Genetics provides the blueprint, but it does not build the house. The environmental crucible, the Rift Valley advantage. So if it's not just the DNA, what is it? We have to look at the environment of the Kalenjin tribe in Kenya and the Oromo people in Ethiopia. These athletes are not born into comfort. They are born into what scientists call a high-altitude endurance cradle. They grow up at 2,400 meters, 8,000 feet above sea level. From the moment they take their first breath, their bodies are forced to adapt to thin air. Their lungs become more efficient. Their hemoglobin mass increases naturally, as we discussed in previous videos. But it's not just the air, it is the lifestyle. 
From a young age, many of these children walk or run 10 to 20 kilometers a day just to get to school. They are building a massive aerobic base, what we call structural tolerance, before they even call themselves athletes. Their tendons become stiff and springy like rubber bands. Their feet become strong. Their hearts adapt to a high workload before puberty. However, here is the critical point that debunks the Superman myth. Their genetics are not unique to the human race. Studies comparing East African runners to other populations found no magical genetic signature that doesn't exist elsewhere. What exists is a combination of harsh environment, a culture that reveres running, and a mindset that is difficult to replicate in the Western world. The ceiling concept, why you are wrong about your limits. And this is where it gets interesting for you. You might be thinking, okay, coach, I wasn't born in Kenya, so I have no chance. Stop right there. While the world record might never be in your legs, the truth is that the biggest obstacle to your performance is not your genetics. It is your training. It is your lifestyle. It is your mindset. Think of genetics as the ceiling of a house. Elite runners through decades of perfect training and lifestyle are jumping up and touching that ceiling. But you, you are likely still standing on the floor. Or maybe you have climbed onto a chair. There's a massive amount of empty space, a huge room for improvement between where you are now and where your genetic ceiling actually is. Most amateur runners never even get close to their genetic limit. They get stopped by injury, by inconsistent training, by poor nutrition, or by lack of sleep long before their DNA becomes the limiting factor. The body is not a static statue carved by your genes. It is a dynamic biological system that changes with every single kilometer you run. The Science of Plumbing Angiogenesis, the real hack. Now, I want to give you a specific scientific mechanism that proves you can change your biology. I want to replace the vague advice of just train hard with actual physiology. You look at elites and think, they have bigger lungs. Wrong. Lung size is largely genetic and doesn't change much. What they have is better plumbing. There is a biological process called angiogenesis or capillarization. Imagine your muscles are a garden. The blood is the water. The arteries are the main hoses. In an untrained person, the garden has one hose trying to water a huge area. The plants, muscles, don't get enough oxygen. In an elite runner, the garden is covered in a dense network of millions of tiny sprinkler systems. Here is the magic. You can build this. This is not genetic. This is mechanical. Every time you run at a low intensity, what we call zone two, you create a specific stress signal in the body. The body senses the need for oxygen and literally drills new tunnels into your muscle tissue. It sprouts new capillaries around your muscle fibers. You are literally changing the hydraulic infrastructure of your body. You are building more roads for the trucks, hemoglobin, to reach the destination. This is why easy running makes you faster. It's not about resting, it's about construction. You are building the plumbing that allows you to sprint at the end of a race without acidic burn. This adaptation is open to everyone. It doesn't matter if you are Greek, American, or Kenyan. If you do the work, the body builds the pipes. The science of decay, why you can't take days off. But here is the catch. You can build the plumbing, but can you keep it? This brings us to a biological rule that explains why elites are untouchable. And it's not about willpower, it's about half-life. Most runners think training is like building a brick wall. You put a brick down today, another one tomorrow, and if you take a week off, the wall stays there waiting for you. Wrong! Running fitness is organic. It rots. Science tells us that mitochondria, the energy factories we are building inside your cells, have a very short half-life. If you stop stimulating them for just 72 hours, they begin to die off. This is why elites run daily. Not because they are obsessed, not because they have nothing better to do, but because they know that biology penalizes inconsistency. When an elite runner trains, they aren't just improving. 
They are fighting off the natural decay of their cells. If you run sporadically, hard on Monday, nothing until Thursday, you are stuck in a biological trap. You spend Thursday just rebuilding what died since Monday. You are running in place. Consistency is not a moral virtue. It is a biological necessity to outpace cellular decay. The 90% rule. Why you need a system. In practice, this means that 90% of runners do not need better genes. They need a better system to fight this decay. They need a program that stacks the right adaptations in the right order. They need to stop running their easy runs too fast, killing angiogenesis, and their hard runs too slow, killing power. They need guidance to avoid overtraining, burnout, and the junk miles that lead nowhere. They need a system, patience, and realism. And they need someone to show them the path. Let's look at one final element. East Africans are not just physiologically adapted, they are socially adapted. They grow up in a culture where running is a way of life, a path to social mobility, a daily mission. This gives them something that no DNA test can measure, mental fortitude. And this is where you can steal from them. You can't steal their high altitude lungs, but you can steal their mindset. The ability to endure discomfort. The ability to stay disciplined when no one is watching. The liberation of truth. Many runners tell me, coach, I just don't have the genes to be fast. I tell them, no, you just don't have the right plan. And this shouldn't make you feel bad. It should make you feel liberated. It is a huge relief to know that you are not a prisoner of your genetics. You are only a prisoner of your habits, and habits can change. Elite runners are not genetic superhumans. They are superhumans in how they live their daily lives. Closing, the voice inside you. So here's the big truth I promised you at the start. Genetics does not determine your future in running. Genetics only determines the ceiling, but 99% of runners never even get close to that ceiling. Most people haven't even touched 60% of their true potential. This means that regardless of your DNA, you can become significantly better than you are today. If you feel like you want to go to the next level, if you want to run more freely, faster, and with greater confidence, if you want someone to guide you based on science, based on capillarization, on hemoglobin, on metabolic thresholds, and not on the chaos of contradictory information found online, then you can do something very simple. Come and join my team. Do not do it because you have to. Do not do it just because I am telling you to. Do it because there is a voice inside you telling you that you can be better than you are today. That you still have road ahead of you. That you haven't discovered your true self yet. That you have the right to aim a little higher. If that voice exists, send me a message. And let's start this journey together. The Nerd Corner. The Membership. And for those of you who want even more knowledge. For those who want to understand the deep biochemistry of angiogenesis, the protocols for mitochondrial biogenesis, and the advanced tools we use. I upload deep dive analyses and advanced lectures on my exclusive membership channel. If you are the type of person who isn't satisfied with the basics, check the link in the description. Because you might not have been born in Kenya, you might not have grown up at altitude, you might not have the perfect ACTN3 gene, but you have something much more powerful, the ability to change, and that in the end is the only thing a runner truly needs. Your running journey, powered by science.